Um, you guys see my screen? Yeah, I can see your screen, yeah. Okay, let me see if I can get rid of this. Oh, no. I don't know. All right, there you go. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Daniel, for the introduction. So my name is Jade Kunjur. Um, I uh, have been working with this talk for many years. Uh, I used to be uh, a Microsoft Desktop Virtual TS uh, for many years. And um, today what I want to uh, show you was uh, a solution that we developed for uh, an insurance client of ours here in the Midwest. Uh, I live in Naperville and uh, typically work in the Chicago area. Uh, Naperville is a suburb of Chicago. And um, this uh, particular engagement, uh, we actually wrapped up, uh, I wrapped up about a year and a half ago. Uh, so when we started uh, doing this, uh, it was probably about two years ago, and Power BI was still in a beta version. And uh, we were one of the early users of it, and quite a bit in that process. And uh, by the time we went live with the solution about a year and a half ago, uh, Power BI was, uh, you know, available, generally available. So the timing worked out very well. So I'm going to have a, a short introduction, and then I'm going to go uh, into uh, demo. So the introduction is, is pretty much just five minutes of PowerPoint, and then I'll spend the bulk of my time, uh, you know, in the demo, and then uh, I'll show you uh, how we did this, and uh, and then we can, um, you know, have take some questions and hopefully answer some of them. So uh, this is just a high-level overview of uh, what uh, we had actually implemented for our customer. Uh, like I said, it was in the insurance domain, and we were uh, using Bistock as an enterprise service bus, and. Uh, we were connecting different systems together. Uh, there was a, a new Guidewire user interface and Guidewire uh, application that was uh, used by the agents to create claims, policies, and bills. And the uh, document storage system and document management were new. Uh, Highlands OnBase was used as the document management system, and uh, Source HOV was used as the document creation system. So uh, typically, uh, when an agent would like to create a claim or a policy, they would send a message over to, uh, through the bus to source HOV, and then you get a, a template back, and then they would fill in the template, and the document would go again through the and saved into the on-base document management system. We also had a customer portal where, you know, and, and customers would be able to uh, retrieve, uh, you know, their claims or policies or bills or certificates. Those were also going through the BizTalk ESB, partly because the, a lot of the documents were stored in the legacy document management system, and BizTalk was actually used to uh, aggregate documents from both the, the, the on-base uh, document management system. So when they did a search or a query, we would have to actually search both the legacy system and the on-base system and then aggregate the documents and then send it back to the end user. So uh, customer portal was another user of the ESB. And then we had other applications that uh, were also gonna be using the ESB for, uh, for different reasons. And uh, we had come up with a kind of a monitoring solution that um, was easy, easy to use. Uh, some of the things that we wanted to monitor were you know, the applications that were both batch and real time. Real time, typically, we had, you know, um, like I said earlier, you know, Guidewire uh, uh, communicating with OnBase to do a document archive or retrieve or update or delete. Or Guidewire, you would, you know, go to source HOE. Or we had custom portal doing search and retrieve from either TCI or OnBase uh, systems. And then we also had batch process for, for uh, bills and, and policies that typically would run at night. And uh, those would typically go from, uh, you know, pulling information from Guidewire, sending it to Source HOV. Source HOV creates all the PDF files that then get sent back 
uh, to the ESB, which then archives all those uh, documents into OnBase. So that's just a high-level picture of what we implemented, and and some of the uh, some of the indications that we were trying to track and monitor. Um, so I think a, a, a question that uh, might be asked is why why use Power BI, and I'll be demonstrating what we actually implemented. Uh, so we needed, uh, you know, an easy to use monitoring solution. Uh, the network operations center were typically like level one. They would get uh, calls if uh, you know, an agent uh, was having any kind of problem with uh, guidewire, and uh, uh, we had to come up with a system that uh, would allow them to quickly, you know, see what was going on, identify if you know um, there's a problem in any particular integration, and uh, you know, not have to learn a lot about Bistock. Uh, I think you know the Bistock Admin Console is a great tool. Uh, so this 360 and some of the other tools that we have, but it requires some knowledge of this stuff. So the, the network operations center, uh, it, you know, it's not so well trained in this stuff. So we had to get them account for something that was simpler. Now we'd already implemented uh, the BAM portal, uh, and um, you know we'd already built as part of our development process. We typically would build BAM, and um, this is not a discussion on BAM. Uh, this this this. Uh, I'm going to assume that people have used the BAM portal and understand that you can track message properties, you can track milestones, you can also track durations for different integrations. So we'd actually built the BAM portal and deployed it, and uh, you know we're using it uh, for debugging our different integrations. You know, uh, post go live, uh, we were able to have, you know make changes because BAM does not require any application code uh, for the instrumentation. You can actually do it uh, post uh, deployment. And uh, you know, BAM provides both uh, real-time and uh, historical aggregated view for each business process. So some of the things that we actually implemented BAM for were, you know, if you want to find a particular message with a particular transaction ID or account number or policy number, you could, you know, do a search pretty quickly. Uh, you could add filters to query by, you know, uh, timestamp, uh, date time, so on and so forth. You know, search for policies by customer name or address. Uh, get the duration for a particular guide by user claims document storage request and response. Um, you know, get the document ID for a particular document archive to on base at a particular day or time. You can view performance for different stages of the business process, including sub integrations. So, for example, customer portal does a request to the ESB. The ESB will be calling on base, will be calling uh, the legacy document storage system. We could determine how long it's taking for each one of those. In the, you know, searches to on base searches to AC system and what the total time of the whole process was. So BAM, you know, it gave us some of that information. Uh, batch process, we could say how long it took to process all the records in the file, uh, and how long it took for the whole end to end process to complete, including updating on base, update, updating type by databases. And you know, we were using BAM tracking for checking if SLAs were being met, uh, and you know, we could. Uh, Pretty much uh, uh, with BAM aggregates, you know, look at how things were behaving over time. Uh, historical data allows you to go back and look at, uh, you know, events and correlate different events and compare, you know, KPS with different uh, time periods. But if people have used the BAM portal and especially the BAM aggregates uh, uh, interface, it uh, it isn't, uh, you know, uh, very modern. Uh, if you look at uh, some of the uh, you know, newer BI tools, uh, you can do a lot more analysis a lot faster. Uh, and the other thing is, we also want to display, you know, ESB exceptions database uh, information so that the, the NOC would have more visibility in the paid messages. So, really, uh, what led us to Power BI was, you know, better user experience. Uh, in, you know, you can display intuitive line graphs and maps. Uh, you know, with easy transitions from hourly to daily or weekly or monthly data. Um, it provided an additional uh, tool for us to get some visibility, you know, in addition to like the BizTalk Admin Console, BAM portal, ESP portal, and the BizTalk Health Monitor. Uh, you know, the, the Power BI dashboard was another uh, view into what was happening with the ESP. So we could, uh, you know, it kind of helped us debug issues, uh, uh, you know, in production. 
because you could go back in time and look at you know what happened and you could set filters and stuff like that. And uh, it's quite fast, especially if you had to display a large amount of historical data. And and the other thing is you know it's a SaaS based uh, solution that runs in the cloud. Uh, there was no installation that was required on premises. Uh, I will go over what we had to change to get this to work. Uh, the basic needs from outbound firewall rules we had to change, and we had to install a, a data access gateway. And uh, you know, uh, it was a pretty low cost. Uh, I think uh, the customer pretty much had to pay under ten dollars per user. It was I think nine dollars in change if you have an enterprise agreement. So you know, getting the, the Power BI uh, licenses were easy, and uh, you know, you could basically pay for what you're using. Uh, you know, if you have uh, ten users, it doesn't really add up to much. You know, it's under hundred dollars uh, per month. Um, so it was a pretty low uh, cost, uh, you know, system uh, for us to be, you know, uh, testing some of this with. So initially we started displaying band data, but then, uh, you know, uh, we started using Power BI to display exceptions in the ESP exceptions database, and then it kind of evolved into displaying, you know, uh, more business data. Uh, and I'll, I'll, you know, show some of that. You know, we were trying to. You know, the, the customer wanted to see claims that were coming in from you know different lines of business. Um, they also wanted to kind of see like a heat map uh, to see you know when you have kind of a disaster situation. Uh, if you have a geographical heat map, you can you know quickly look at where a lot of the claims are coming in from. And uh, you know the other thing is because of the business data we start displaying. You know, uh, I think uh, Power BI became uh, more of a uh, easier to use uh, platform for you know displaying some of this information. So um, you know, we kind of gave a demo to the BI team, and you know, they were also uh, quite impressed with how easily you could actually you know uh, display data from your on-premise databases. So, uh, like I said, Azure-based subscription model, uh, very low-cost entry point. And we also uh, have a production support team that is, you know, a uh, heavy user of these dashboards. Uh, they use it for, you know, uh, presenting the daily health check reports to the business and stakeholders in IT. Um, and uh, uh, you know, it's it's basically and you know shows the customer, you know, uh, the real value of uh, the you know ESP that we've implemented. So. What we monitored. So some of the things we monitored were basically some KPIs and uh, uh, tracking of service level agreements, and also tracking failures and uh, in some business data. So really, the the KPIs uh, that uh, I'll show you right now is you know we, we're tracking volume, duration, message size, and throughput. So volume typically means you know how many claims were successfully processed, and how many that failed. And uh, you know it helps us answer questions like uh, is is a volume unusually high, or is it way below the expected volume? Is it trending upward at a faster rate? Uh, you know, let's say we deployed a new release and you know uh, we were expecting a volume of you know uh, 10,000 you know transactions an hour, and it's uh, significantly higher. In which case, do we need to be proactive and take some action? Uh, do we have an you know an unusual number of failures at a particular time? You know, did we have some kind of event that um, uh, you know maybe throttling to occur, and we can go to this and uh, you know the, the Power BI dashboard and see what happened at that time, and you know see if we had a large number of failures that time. We also looked at durations of uh, different integrations. You know, if, if the end user who's using the customer portal is experiencing uh, you know large wait times, uh, we want to be alerted by that. Um, you know, or, or if a new release is impacting, you know, processing time, and then message time, message sizes. We also looked at that. You know, for example, uh, request response message sizes for different integrations. We were tracking that. Um, you know, let's see. It's, you know, in one case, there was a search request that was, you know, returning a very large payload. Uh, so we kind of had to look at what we could do to filter the request so that you know we don't have very large payloads going through the ESV. And, and pretty much impacting other applications running within the stock environment. And then we also looked at throughput. Um, is the rate at which you're processing records meeting SLA? 
So there were some batch processes that had kind of finished, you know, processing a certain number of records within, you know, half an hour or one hour. So we were tracking throughput. And we had alerts that were monitoring the SLAs. So uh, an SLA is not being met, we would fire an, uh, an alert. But no single max or min value would cause an alert. So basically, we looked at aggregates. And uh, KPIs were both both end to end, and in some cases, uh, just sub indications. And you know, with Power BI, we were able to actually uh, compare two different time periods, you know, uh, very quickly. And uh, for example, if you want to see the uh, for a particular integrations for from last week compared to this week, uh, you can easily do that. If you want to compare from last one to this one, uh, you can do that very easily. Okay, so I'm going to go to the demo. Like I said, uh, didn't want to spend too much time on the PowerPoint. So the demo that we created is not the customer production site. Um, the customer production site, like I said, has many different applications. That we, uh, what we are doing in our demo site is just showing you one integration, uh, and we're going to show you all the different uh, uh, metrics that we're tracking uh, in both back and real time. So let me now. Uh, Go to our Power BI dashboard. So, so this is this is a uh, uh, what the Power BI dashboard looks like. Um, it's basically uh, you know if you go uh, along this side horizontally, uh, you can see that uh, we are pretty much continuously monitoring the uh, ESP, monitoring the uh, environment. This is running within a browser, and it's running with an app dot powerbi.com. Um, that is the, the hosted Power BI that uh, runs on Azure, and uh, you know pretty much uh, any any uh, a Power BI account and was authorized can can log in. So the end users will log into AppPowerBI.com, and then they land at this landing page. And if I can, if I'll, I'll just go horizontally across the tiles here. We have you know the number of claims processed in the last one hour, the number of claims processed in the last one day. And this is showing you one week's worth of data. And this is allowing you to do claims from a date time filter. And then if I go down uh, the page, uh, we have you know the average duration, again, by the hour, by the day, by the week. And then you can use a filter. And I'm going to drill down to each one of these uh, as soon as I finish going through this page. Uh, we also have you know the number of claims that fail. Uh, this, this, these tiles are pulling data from the bank primary import database. This one is pulling it uh, the ESP exceptions database. So again, we're tracking how many fail in the last hour, uh, you know, last day, week, and by uh, filter. And then we have the message sizes that we're tracking uh, throughput. And then uh, you know, this is showing you like the, the heat map. Like I said earlier, you can see claims coming in uh, based on. Uh, uh, geographic location again through these a little bit later, and uh, you know this is basically uh, showing you how we can compare current versus previous. So typically you want to compare current versus previous week, uh, and you know for each one of those KPIs we can do uh, current versus previous. And then um, we started showing some business data, uh, you know claims based on the different lines of business. Uh, so so that is coming from uh, a guide wide database. So we're pulling some of that information from a different data uh, store that's on premise. And then we also came up with a, a generic interface where you could actually pull BAM transactional data directly from BAM primary import and display it. So let me uh, uh, do a drill down into the first file. So here you have the number of claims processed in the last one hour. So uh, uh, what this would display. Uh, again, this is actually doing a round trip. Uh, it's going through the data access gateway to the on-premise database and pulling the information. And uh, we'll we'll show this as soon as it gets refreshed. So typically, we have this uh, a line graph that uh, you know shows you what the data looks like uh, in the last one hour. Uh, we, you can hover over it. You can actually see the number of claims that have come in in the last one hour. Uh, this is telling you the total number of claims processed in the last one hour, and this is showing you, you know, where the claims are coming from. 
Uh, you can also kind of uh, drill down and look at uh, you know the, the location. So if you just want to see uh, the, the claims that are coming in from you know this particular region, you can actually drill down and it only shows you the line graph for that particular region and the total claims that came in for that particular region. Uh, there's another explore option where you can actually look at uh, the data uh, that's in the map for you know each one of these cities. Uh, the, the claims that are coming in through the ESP for that particular city. So, uh, you know, pretty nice uh, interface where you know you can uh, you can actually go in and uh, uh, make this uh, full screen, and uh, and this allows you to you know. So I can actually now from this I can. So this is showing me the last one hour. Uh, I can I can next you know click here. And uh, now it's showing me the, the claims process in the last one day. Um, and here again, we have the last one day data uh, in a line graph format, in a map format. And, and this is basically showing you what the current value is. You know, 47, 83 claims are processed today. And this is showing you, you know, the 999 were processed yesterday. So you're comparing today versus yesterday. And it says, you know, what the percentage change is compared to the previous day. So again, if, if there's something unusual like this, uh, you know, this is some useful information for the network uh, operation center to look at and see, you know, why we're getting a large number of claims coming in from, you know, Lansing, Michigan. Now this is this is going back and showing you more historical data. You can look at, you know, the number of claims that were processed in uh, the last one week. Similarly, you have the geographical data showing you last one week, and then you have the current versus previous. So this is showing you the number of claims in the previous week were like 1998 claims in the previous week. Total for this week, percentage change. So pretty large number of claims we processed this week. And uh, you can uh, pretty much, you know, very quickly look at uh, what happened in the last one month. Uh, so it's going to Refresh there, that refresh. So it's pulled one month worth of data. Uh, you know, obviously we started running a demo uh, probably a week before uh, Integration Monday, so we started seeing the spike. But you know, you can you can get the idea that uh, this allows you to kind of look at uh, historical trends. Uh, I can go back three months, and uh, you can go back six months. As you can see. Uh, the refresh rate is, is is really fast. I mean, you know, uh, let's see if I can go back one year. So, one year is pretty interesting. There's 320,000 entries, uh, percentage change. Uh, but again, this is a demo site. But I think you get the idea that we can actually look at uh, a lot of uh, you know, different information, including you know, filtering, drill downs. Uh, you know, using Power BI, it allows you to, you know, do all of these things. So, much uh, nicer user interface than uh, what uh, the you know BAM portal provides. So, I'll I'll quickly go through uh, the average duration tiles. So, in addition to the number of claims, uh, what, the other KPI I mentioned earlier was you know, looking at duration. Again, you can look at durations. Uh, uh, for the last one hour. So what what this is showing is what is interesting here is uh, we're showing you the durations for processing, um, and you know we're showing uh, the max, the min, and uh, the average. So you know this is this is kind of useful for. For someone to look at, because uh, if if you know the SLAs are basically based on average, uh, if you have occasional maxes and mins, you know it's not going to fire alerts. And then if you want to look at uh, the duration of claims process for the last one day, again, uh, you know we're able to look at average, min, max for the last uh, one day, and look at uh, you know the percentage change of the duration. Again, compared you know today, compared to yesterday, 
you see the change of 7.4%. Uh, nothing, you know, that's nothing much to worry about. Of course, in 64 seconds seems to be quite a bit uh, of average duration. So it might be something that we would look into as to why it's taken, you know, more than a minute to complete uh, this end-to-end -end process. Um, and then you can look at average duration using the, the week-month filter. Uh, this is basically telling you what the average is for the, for the whole week. I can change this and look at the whole month. And uh, this is also showing uh, min, max, and average. Um, so the user interface allows you to look at, uh, uh, you know, the same kind of uh, KPIs, but looking, you know, the same KPIs, but looking at it, uh, you know, using similar line graphs and other uh, other visualizations. And again, going back, you know, looking from going from one hour to uh, multiple weeks and months. And number of claims failed. This is uh, pulling information from the ESB exceptions database. Uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, we are routing exceptions to the ESB portal, but uh, you know, if you don't turn the ESB alerts on, uh, they pretty much get lost. Uh, people aren't really observing them. So by you know surfacing them in our Power BI dashboard, uh, you know, we can at least have the network operation team alert us if. You know, the numbers are unusually high um, because typically we route exceptions to the ESP portal and not have them, you know, suspending in, in the Vista Python console. So uh, it's good. It's good to look into why we are getting exceptions, uh, what the reasons for the exceptions were, um, you know, and if you, you know, if you're seeing a large number of exceptions in the last one hour, it's obviously cause for concern. You then want to call you know, level two support. Or even get level three support involved to kind of look at you know what's what's going on here. So uh, you know this is this is basically showing you the number of exceptions that uh, happened uh, in the last one hour, and we can also look at it uh, just like we did with the others. We can look at uh, the exceptions for the last one day. And again, use a weak moon filter to drill down, and uh, you know if you want, want to look at you know where, what most of the exceptions are for last one week. Again, you can go back up to one year, and and look at uh, the ESP exceptions for the last one year. And uh, message size, uh, like I said, I won't go into this. Uh, this is basically telling you what the uh, request response message sizes were for that particular integration. And uh, in our case, uh, our demo site, we pretty much, uh, it's, it's pretty much a horizontal line. It's not really very interesting. And then throughput is, is somewhat interesting because we want to always look at, uh, you know, the message processing rate of the ESB uh, for different integrations. In, in particular, if there's a batch process, and you know the rate is supposed to be you know, process a thousand transactions per hour. Uh, we are pretty much continuously monitoring the, the rate and uh, and uh, you know looking at uh, looking at uh, what the throughput is. And again, you know this is telling you that uh, the number of claims per hour today versus yesterday, uh, whether you know. It's uh, showing you showing that it's gone down for some reason. Uh, maybe that's something that needs to be investigated. Then, if you look at uh, the week chart, you also see a decline in in processing throughput. Uh, this might be something to investigate because obviously, if the rate is going down, um, we have to kind of look at: is it because there aren't too many claims coming in, or is there uh, you know, something else wrong? So we might say, okay, we had a release that went out, uh, you know, about two weeks ago. So let me go and you know, look at the month view, and we might say, okay, you know, things were kind of looking pretty okay till you know September sixth, and we had this big spike, and then all of a sudden things start going down. This might be useful information for a development team to look at and figure out that you know uh, this is something that we need to investigate and fix. So pretty much, uh, 
you know, every integration, so this is just one end-to-end uh, -end business process that we would track, but there would be multiple business processes that would have, you know, these KPIs that uh, we would track. Uh, you know, the number of claims, number of failures, duration, throughput, necessities. And then uh, we had a request to actually start showing, uh, you know, some of the business data. You know, the, the business data uh, is more interesting because it, 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 you know, we were able to kind of pull uh, from, uh, you know, uh, from BAM data, we were actually able to filter out you know, through the through by parsing the messages, uh, we were able to look at uh, the messages coming in uh, for different lines of business, um, and you know also look at uh, the dollar marks that were coming in by the hour. Uh, you know this this is again a demo, so not, nothing real here, but uh, it's it's you know. Uh, Information that uh, can be displayed, you know, on on a monitor inside uh, the business premises. If you wanted to see what is going on, you know, how many claims are coming in, what uh, types of uh, lines of business were being impacted, um, and uh, again, you, you know, you have this uh, uh, option of uh, you know drilling down and uh, you know looking at a particular region, how it's doing. Uh, Actually, here this is drilling down by lines of business, and uh, the other part is you can also look at um, the exit full screen here. And uh, so, so this is something uh, is uh, of interest to business users. And uh, again, uh, this allows us to display data from a non discord database and surface it on the Power BI dashboard. And uh, you know, the other, like I said earlier, you can actually uh, also look at uh, uh, Last one hour. This is the last one day. And if you if you look at uh, C data here for the last one day, you can also see you know, some of the financial information that was tied to the map that we just saw earlier. So this you know shows you by the line of business, you know what the uh, uh, claim amounts were based on the line of business. So. Uh, you know, this is the, the heat map kind of information that uh, is is uh, you know useful for customers to look at. I'm not going to go and look at uh, you know the, the the week view and the month view. Uh, one thing I did want to show you is I actually forgot to show you was if you wanted to do a filter. So you know still now we've been looking at last one day, last one week, you know last one month from current time. But if I wanted to actually do a filter, let's say I want to look at uh, something that you know happened uh, a few days ago between a particular timestamp, uh, Power BI allows us to to filter uh, pretty nicely. And uh, so what we have is uh, the filter capability here. So I can actually uh, uh, say I want to actually go and look at. Uh, uh, let's say I want to look at something that happened. Uh, uh, let's say September uh, 8th uh, from 12 a.m. to uh, September 8th. Uh, let's say September 9th to 12 a.m. Okay, not a whole lot happened. Okay, so let me go back and change this to uh, a longer duration. So, 
you know, this this allows you to kind of filter based on a particular, you know, date timestamp uh, period. And you can actually get pretty granular. You can get to like, you know, minutes if you want to look at, you know, what happened at a particular time when, for example, you know, we had throttling happen in the, in the customer portal post uh, at a particular day and time. And we're able to kind of filter based on that day and time and look at, you know, each of these uh, APIs at a very granular level to see if there's any correlation between, you know, either the number of claims that we got or the number of policies that came in and why, you know, throttling happened. So, uh, you know, a lot of different ways to, to monitor your system. And like I said, we had to keep it at a very high level uh, in, in terms of, you know, uh, ease of use uh, for the NOC and for business users. Um, and uh, and then also use, this was a useful tool for, you know, uh, the BizTalk admin and also some of the BizTalk developers that were kind of uh, support, you know, the applications. So this is an example where we want to compare current with the previous. So here, what I'm looking at is um, data for the number of claims processed, and it's it's pulling data from the BAM primary import database, and uh, it's going to display data that shows you what happened this week versus what happened last week. Okay, so you know what what. Uh, this is helping us do is it helps us, like I was telling you earlier, it's a, a useful way to look at uh, a new release went out or we had some bug fixes that went out for a particular application and we actually want to compare what happened. Um, and also, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it's actually useful for us to go back, you know, six months and uh, take a look at, uh, you know, what's the difference between what happened six months ago and what happened today. So. Having this side-by-side -side comparison was found to be very useful for our end users. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, it gives you additional visibility, and it's, it's very quick, uh, you know, to display some of this information. And uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to slice and dice data that uh, uh, you know is very powerful uh, when it comes to supporting and sustaining your, uh, you know, your ESP. Okay, uh, so we went through the heat map, we went through the side by side, and I'm, I'm not going to go through, you know, you can do the same thing for the you know, durations, message size, uh, and claims uh, throughput. And then uh, another interesting uh, business request was, you know, trying to look at, uh, you know, slicing and dicing a particular uh, uh, business process and trying to so this was a, a, a somewhat complicated business process that had many uh, pieces to it, many sub indications that were part of it. So we had to kind of uh, keep track of uh, what was happening within each sub indication and then what was happening uh, in the total total uh, duration. So so this this is one example where you can actually look at the overall end-to-end -end timing and then within the end-to-end -end, you can actually look at what is happening in each sub integration. So we had, you know, we had to go um, and look at, you know, uh, for example, uh, the customer portal would make a request, and you know, we had to actually within uh, ESB go and pull data from different data sources to get the customer information uh, from an Oracle database, get policy information from uh, you know, another database, or uh, you know getting vehicle information from a web service, you know, wind information you know, go and get from an external wind, uh, wind service, and then billing data from a different location, aggregate it all, and send it back to the customer portal. So we wanted to actually look at how, how well each one of those sub-integrations were doing because we wanted to find out, you know, which is the worst performing of all so that we could, uh, you know, go and do some tuning and uh, figure out, you know, what was going on. So this allowed us to very quickly uh, identify, you know, which, who the culprit was, what was taking the, the longest time. And, uh, you know, in a production scenario, this is quite powerful because a lot of times you don't have that visibility into what is going through the ESP 
and uh, this is something that you know shows you the values very quickly. And again, you can filter and you get more granular. You can get down to a minute level if you wanted to, um, and uh, it's a very useful uh, tool for debugging uh, you know problems that occur. And uh, finally, uh, uh, we used to have a, a Q and A, which was another feature. Uh, but uh, you know, one of the things that we used to have is you know you could actually type in a request uh, and it would pull the data from the band portal. But we actually built something where you could actually pull uh, band data by using you know the date and time filter. And uh, let me. Uh, so this was uh, another way where you know they didn't have to actually use a BAM portal. Uh, we, we we just go and uh, use a filter and, and pull the data in and you know, look at uh, you know more more details about the customer, the date it was entered, um, city, you know message size, payload size, stuff like agent name. So this is pulling data from BAM primary import. So it's a again they don't have to leave the Power BI dashboard. They're able to actually search Power BI and uh, very quickly pull the information that they need. Now, one additional interesting feature about uh, Power BI dashboard is so this is the web-based, uh, you know, uh, dashboard um, uh, that uh, you know people would use. Now, they also have a, a phone-based interface. So, if I wanted to see what my Power BI dashboard looks like uh, over the phone, uh, this is this is what it would look like, you know. So end users would log in using their phones into, you know, log into afterpavia.com, and this is how the dashboards would look on their phones. And they can, you know, pretty much drill down and, uh, you know, do a lot of the things that you can do on on the web page or you know on the desktop on the phone. So you know, pretty useful feature for, you know, someone who's a BizTalk admin or some of the developers who. Uh, uh, are very dedicated and uh, like to log in and uh, you know look at uh, how their applications are performing uh, on their phone. Uh, so, uh, you know, another uh, nice feature of Power that you get with Power BI uh, that uh, I think you know makes it uh, a more compelling plat platform for you know displaying some of uh, your uh, you know business data and your performance data. So uh, that's uh, the extent of the demo. So now what I'm going to do is uh, going to quickly dive into uh, how we actually implemented this. And uh, let me uh, let me go over to uh, our, uh, our virtual machine here. So this is this is. Uh, you know, essentially, uh, we, we have our demo server running on Azure. And um, the demo uh, orchestration is, uh, you know, simulating what we would uh, do in the real life, uh, uh, you know, claims process. We have uh, messages coming in. Uh, we have, you know, whether they're claims or policies or bills, take, you know, different branches and, uh, we you know send a response back. So we we have uh, you know we we're not using the BAM API as you can see. We just use you know use a tracking profile editor uh, instrumentation that is done outside of code to track all these different milestones and also tracking you know failed messages being routed to the ESB exceptions database. So this is what we're using to drive our whole demo site and uh, uh, you know application, but. Like I said, it's just a demo. The actual uh, meat of uh, our Power BI application is really the, uh, you, you actually uh, uh, use the uh, uh, the BI solution. Uh, so typically what you would do is uh, you would um, up uh, Visual Studio uh, for BI, uh, so that's, you know, so this is a SQL Server data tools for Visual Studio is what, what uh, we're using. So I can go in here and say, you know, I can open this 
and uh, it'll open the Studio, and uh, you know you can. Uh, I already have the selected poses, but we have you can create a new project or you know open an existing project. So if you open our NK Power BI SSAS, uh, this is what you would see. It creates a, a Power BI BIM uh, file, and once you have the BIM file, you uh, can start you know building your SSAS uh, tabular data, uh, and you can build your measures. Um, and I'll I'll quickly go over you know what this looks like. So a couple of things. One is if you if you look at uh, the properties of the BIM file, you know what it tells you is basically it is uh, using uh, SSAS tabular format on your local machine. So it's actually pulling a lot of the data that you referenced into a local version of SSAS. Um, and then what you would actually do is when you're when you finished your measures, uh, you would pretty much go and uh, you can deploy it to SSAS. And when you deploy it, uh, it actually puts it into uh, the actual SSAS database, which I'll show you here. SQL Server Manager Studio running. So this is my SQL Server Analysis Services um, instance, and uh, you know this is what we actually deploy to. And you see the instance here. This is associated with uh, uh, you know a Visual Studio instance. Uh, so this is like a local workspace that gets created as you're doing development. And once you exit Visual Studio, that local workspace disappears. And uh, you know, once you deploy it from your local workspace, it goes into your uh, um, your yeah, actual SSAS database. So what you have to do when you start out is you have a clean canvas and uh, you uh, start by uh, connecting to a uh, particular data store. So what you can actually do is uh, um, connect. Uh, let's see. You can click on import from data source. So this is the first thing you would typically do is uh, use a table import wizard. And these are the different data sources you can import from. Uh, we're using SQL Server, but you can actually use Azure. Um, all these are different data sources that you can pull from. Okay, so once you once you selected uh, SQL as a data source, the next thing you would do is uh, you know select uh, the server name. In in our case. Uh, we're running uh, SQL on our local server. So BTS and ENT is, is where we're pulling from. And then you know you can choose the kind of authentication you use. We're using uh, Windows authentication. And it you know, you know it tells you which database you want to pull from. So so these are, you know, all the relational databases that we currently have. You know, BAM primary import is where we're storing a lot of the BAM data. We have the ESB exception database that is containing all the exceptions. So, you know, uh, if you looked at uh, our SQL instance here, you can see, you know, all our all our databases. Any BizTalk developer is probably familiar with, you know, the BAM primary import and all these other BizTalk databases. So Using the uh, Visual Studio, uh, you know, you can actually connect to the database of interest. So in my case, if I just want to connect to the ESB exception database, I can do that. And then once you click Next, it uh, tells you whether you want to use a specific username or password, or you want to use a service account. I'm going to use a service account. And then uh, it asks you whether you want to pull from a table, or you want to actually pull from a query. So we have, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, data coming directly from tables that we map to you know, the Power BI. So I'm going to select that. You typically choose the query if you had score procedures that you want to call, or if you actually want to write a specific query for data from, you know, uh, different tables within the database. And then I'm going to select uh, the ESB fault table because that's where a lot of my exceptions are. 
So I would select that and then I click finish. Once you do that, uh, basically what it does is it's going to pull all the data that's in the fall table into your workspace. So I'm going to I'm going to exit this because I've already done this. So once you do that, it pulls all the fall information, and you can see this is you know typically the data that's in the fall database, and then you define measures. So this this pane allows you to create measures and. I've created a, a pretty simple measure here called number of faults. And you define number of faults, you know, in, in the pane up here. So uh, I'll just uh, typically, uh, you know, in this particular case, you, you would basically say, you know, you define number of faults, colon equals, and uh, it's it. Just to find a new measure. All right, it's not letting me. But anyway, uh, I think someone else has locked this. But typically, you define uh, the number of faults, and you say you know whether you want to count the number of rows in the fault column, and it essentially pulls this uh, in, you know information out into the measure. And then once you define the measure, you can save this. You deploy uh, using right-click deploy. And after you've done this deploy, it will be deployed to the SSAS database that I showed you earlier. And pretty much, uh, you know, uh, once you have defined the measure over here, so we have many different measures that uh, we've created uh, for you know some of the different clients that you've seen in the dashboard. But I'm just taking a very simple example here. Once you define this and deploy this, it is now in your SSAS database. Um, and so let me go ahead and deploy this, and uh, I'll show you what the interface looks like. Okay, so it's going to deploy all of my uh, all of my uh, measures, which is fine. So while that is uh, doing the deployment, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, go back to Power BI, and I'm going to show you how we actually pull that particular measure that we created in Visual Studio. How we actually pull that into uh, Power BI. So I'm going to close this window. And uh, go back to Power BI, and, and uh, go back to my development dashboard here. And what you would notice is uh, there's this uh, button here called Get Data. So I'll click on Get Data, and it's it's going to come up with uh, all the different data sources that I can access. So you can actually pull data from, uh, you know, uh, different sources here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna choose uh, databases, and I'm gonna choose SQL Server Analysis Services. And this is gonna connect to my uh, on-premise uh, Power BI SSAS uh, database. And I'll show you uh, how it, it's able to actually detect this and connect to it. It's, there's actually a, a connector that is, uh, that is used uh, as, as part of, uh, there's a data access gateway connector that, that you actually have to install. And uh, it's, once you install that connector, uh, you actually will see it in under the services menu, and I'll I'll show you. I have a link to how you install that gateway connector. But this is this is a data management gateway service that gets installed after you enter the uh, data management gateway connector. Uh, I don't know if I have a link to it, but okay. 
this is available in the presentation that I'm going to share with you at the end of the call. But this uh, this actually tells you how to go about installing the connector. Uh, let me scroll up here. So with, we have to install the the uh, Power BI Data Gate Gateway Connector, and uh, it tells you about some limitations. We are using the personal data connector. So uh, you can download it, and uh, uh, there, there are two different connectors. So we use the uh, on-premise personal data connector. That's this guy. And once you click launch, it, it comes up with, uh, you know, tells you whether what account you want to use. Uh, you need to install it uh, with an account that has permissions to your SSAS database uh, and also uh, has permissions to start a service. So once you do that and uh, you, you click next and you finish the installation, that's when it actually creates this uh, service for you. And this service is the one that uh, uh, is actually communicating with Power BI in the cloud. The other, the other part that uh, is also important is this tells you about the firewall ports that need to be open. Um, and these are all outbound ports that need to, get, need to be open. And uh, you know, it tells you a little bit more about what firewall ports need to be open. No inbound ports, all outbound. And uh, let me see if I can actually show you that. Smoke. Oh, never mind. So uh, this is this is showing you the architecture for the data gateway. Let me just make this a bit bigger. So this is how the gateway works. Basically, it has uh, you have all your Power BI apps, and you have you know even Logic apps and uh, other Microsoft Flow uh, can can use this application gateway to talk to your on-premise data sources. So essentially, you know, after you do the airport firewalls and you have the service uh, set up, you're all set. Um, you, you can then go to Power BI, and now we're able to. Uh, Sorry, We're able to actually see the NK Power BI database through that service and through the gateway. We're able to actually see the database. So let me click this database and uh, now I'm connecting to the uh, SSAS tabular database that I created on premise. And it's telling me that this is what is available. I click connect. And now it's importing uh, the data that's in that database. Okay, let's see what happened there. Okay, typically what we would see at this point is the uh, Power BI dashboard showing up. I'm not seeing it. But essentially once you have uh, pulled the data, Once you pull the data from the data source, uh, what we should be able to do after that is uh, 
we go to the dataset, uh, not stream dataset, so you go in here. You would essentially be able to see the different uh, measures that you've created. Um, and I'm going to type in uh, one of the measures that I created earlier. So you can, you can see uh, some of the fault information in here. Uh, so number of fault messages, I want to select that. So you can actually select, now you're actually connected to the, uh, the uh, SSAS database and I can actually choose the different uh, measures that I want to actually display on my chart here. Um, let's go there, let's select the fault severity. Uh, and you can uh, choose the chart type. Uh, let's say I want to change this to a pie chart. So it allows me to change that to a pie chart. So you can see that I'm actually directly connected uh, from my Power BI dashboard uh, as a developer into the um, uh, databases that are on premise. And I can design uh, the layout of the chart um, and, you know, pull from different tables and uh, aggregate them in my chart. And then once I've done this, um, I'm able to uh, uh, basically uh, save this. Let's, uh, I've done that, let's see. Save. So I'll just give it uh, a name. So this is this is saving as a report in your local environment. And now now what I can do is uh, uh, once I save this, I can actually pin this to a particular uh, dashboard. So now it's saying save a report. So I let me give it a name. Can save it, okay. And then it asks you whether you want to save it to an existing dashboard or a new dashboard. So I'm just going to say, you know, save it to a new dashboard and I'm going to call it uh, Integration Monday and say pin. So what it's doing is it's pinning this tile uh, to a new uh, dashboard that I created. So, so essentially, what you would see here is, you know, you have the reports in here and you have the dashboards in here. So now if I go to my dashboard, I, I see what I just pulled from the, you know, ESB exception database number of all messages. So the things to remember are you have data sets, you have reports, and you have the dashboard. And dashboard is where every, all the tiles are displayed, but you can actually once you have created your data set, you can connect, you know, using the Power BI UI to that data set, create uh, the, the chart, uh, display it in the report, and then once it's in the report, you can actually show it up, you know, show it in the actual uh, dashboard. So, um, essentially, that's how we created uh, this particular uh, monitoring solution uh, with all the different files uh, that allow us to monitor the different applications within this stuff. At this point, uh, I've already, I think, uh, completed uh, most of the demo. So let me quickly go back to uh, the presentation and let's see what's left. So, so this is the demo. So, uh, we were essentially, how uh, the architecture for Power BI is, you know, every, you know, the end users typically, and even developers, log into after PowerBI.com. You have databases where we have BAM or ESB exception database or business data. Uh, you define KPIs and measures using Visual Studio uh, and uh, BI. And uh, once you define the measures and you connect it to the tables, uh, you can define filters. And then you uh, pull that into uh, data sets. You publish those data sets. And then you pull them into reports, and the reports will have all the charts and the visualizations. And then once you have that, you can actually pin different charts into the dashboard. 
So uh, that's essentially the architecture. One of the things I uh, forgot to go over is uh, we have uh, another dashboard where we have alerts. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you don't want people staring at, uh, you know, the Power BI reports all day. We have alerts that we're tracking when, uh, you know, for, for some reason, uh, one of the KPIs, uh, you know, exceed the SLAs. So, for example, we had an alert with a number of claims, you know, exceeded a particular threshold condition. Uh, so we have alerts that, uh, you know, fire up, and you can actually look at look at details here. Uh, the alerts uh, show up in our email inbox uh, as an alert. So this is kind of the alerts that we actually uh, had in the last few hours. Uh, you know, so it's kind of useful uh, in addition to displaying uh, uh, the alerts, you know, you can report on them and you can actually take some action if, you know, any of the KPIs are not being met or SLAs are not being met. So uh, the alert uh, functionality is, is also pretty useful. And one more interesting uh, way you can alert uh, with uh, Power BI is uh, you can actually let me make sure you can actually uh, define end users can actually define their own alerts, so you can actually add alerts right here, uh, and you can say I want to be alerted, uh, and you can set your own custom alerts. You know, I if, if you're not happy with what you know the administrator has set up, you can actually define your own alerts for each one of these KPIs, and you can save them. So. As a user, you you can define your own alerts, and uh, it's customizable for your own needs. So so each of these tiles allows you to set up your own alert. Uh, but the way we implemented alerting was we actually have uh, uh, a simple desktop application that uh, that allows us to kind of change uh, change the alerts and uh, not already sophisticated one, but we basically created a, a little uh, tool that allows uh, you know an admin to select uh, the alert that they want to change, and we have a you know condition value that you can change. For demo purposes, we obviously set uh, a number of alert claims per hour to a very small value. So if it's greater than five, we fire an alert. So we see a lot of alerts, but I can actually change that uh, to say if it's greater than. Uh, not 50, then fire an alert. So the alerts pretty much run. Uh, it's actually a, a SQL job that we're using that uh, uh, uses a SQL DB mail. Um, and uh, there's a, a, a SQL agent job that actually is running that uh, store proc, which goes and checks. Uh, that you know the alerts table to see if any thresholds are being uh, violated, SLAs are being violated, and then sends off an email if any of those are being violated. So uh, essentially, uh, you know, we, we not only are uh, you know displaying the data, but we're also firing off alerts. And uh, there are many other uh, dashboards that we built, uh, and and this is ongoing. A customer is still uh, you know, using some of these features, and uh, we, you know, we continuously add as we add more uh, functionality and applications to the ESP, we make sure that we design BAM and we design uh, you know some tiles to track that information because you never know when you need it. Okay, and uh, some useful links. Uh, I just went over how to set up the on-premise data gateway. I showed you guys that link. It tells you about uh, the firewall settings, uh, how to install the gateway on-prem, um, and uh, you know, security and stuff like that. And there's some nice articles about using Power BI, and then uh, a nice article about how to monitor the stock uh, using BAM. And uh, that's it. I don't have anything else I want to demo. I'll share this PowerPoint. and. Uh, I'm done with my presentation. 
Okay, thanks, Joseph, for this. Uh, let's look if anyone has any questions. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, there you go. There are some questions. Uh, okay, so uh, this one is coming from uh, Jitendra. Uh, was latency one of the KPI and how was it balanced along with throughput? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, uh, latency, latency is a good KPI uh, that uh, uh, should be tracked. But uh, what we were using is the average duration uh, as uh, an indicator of latency. So uh, we were tracking durations for you know, some of the web service calls and uh, you know, tracking how long it took for that to finish. So a lot of, lot of uh, you know, like the customer portal requests and other requests would, would call uh, the ESB on-ramp uh, via a web service call. We could track how long that web service took to, to complete you know, right from the on-ramp. Uh, to the off ramp and for us that was a measure of latency the duration itself okay and to add to that question uh, was the volume uh, as well as the batch uh, referring here for real time no the the real time was uh, basically uh, a lot of the claims processing were real time um, the batch processes were what we had implemented were for policies and claims, because those were you know not 